Now let's talk about target bones. We're going to start with a basic example here and then apply it to copper. So we have an arm here and if I come in and just move this around, you can see what it looks like. It's just a pretty simple animation of an arm. What I want to do is add in some target bones or at least one target bone in this example to create a stretchy effect with the arm. So first, let's go back to frame zero and I want to make sure that we have nothing selected when we add a new bone. So I'll select the add bone tool and we can hit escape or you can alt and click off of the bone to deselect. And it's important that your targets are not attached to the character rig when doing this. So we're just going to click to add in this independent bone and then come over here to the transform bone tool and come down and attach this target to the wrist like so. If we come over here and use the select bone tool with that new pin bone still selected, I can come up to the top bar here and rename it to target. Now, if we come over here and click on the forearm bone and then go to bone constraints, you can see we have the ability to select a target. So right down here, if we click on none, we have the ability to select that target bone we just created. So let's go ahead and click on target. You may note then the target bone now looks like a target. So with that, we're just going to close this really quick and give it a test. So let's go to frame six. Again, just past frame zero will do. And we're going to use the transform bone tool grab the anchor or target bone in this case and click and drag. Now you'll note as I'm doing this, I'm able to move this along. And even if I go outside the bounds of the bones, the target bone actually allows me to move it. And I still have control over the arm even past that point. So from here, if we wanted to, we could come in and you don't have to be on frame zero for this, but I'm going to go to frame zero anyway, just as a force of habit. And we can go and click on the forearm for this, go up to bone constraints. And below target, you'll see that we have maximum IK stretching. So we're just going to increase this, let's say to 200% and then close. So now if we go past frame zero and start doing some movement here, with the target, you can see as I go beyond the bounds of those original bones that the forearm bone is actually extending out to reach the target. And it'll get to a point where it can no longer go because we only put it to 200%. But as you can see, it creates this nice stretchy effect. And you can do the same for, in this case, the bicep as well. So if we went in and just change the IK stretching here to, let's just say 165. Go back here to the target bone. You can see now we're able to stretch that out as well. So that's pretty cool and gives you some options when it comes to creating different stylized effects with your bone animation. Now let's come over here to copper and add some targets to an actual rig. Let's come over here to the layers and make sure we have copper selected and go back to frame zero. On frame zero, we can select the add bone tool. And like before with the arm example, we want to make sure that nothing is selected. So I can alt click or hit escape to make sure that nothing is selected and then come down and we're going to focus on the feet. So I'm just going to click and then hold an alt and click again and then click one more time to create two independent target bones. Using the transform bone tool, we can grab one, move it over to the bottom of the first foot, and then the second, just like this. Now, for these bones, starting with the left one, I'm just going to type in target left, and then this one can be target right. Now, we can go over here to our legs, and we'll click on the back leg first. 
go to your bone constraints. Under target, we'll choose target left. And then target right. From here, if we come in, let's say go past frame zero, we can use the transform bone tool and you can see we are able to move the legs around just like this. Now you can tell that they're bending a certain way and we can't actually get them to bend in the way that they probably should be bending for the way this looks. So there's a couple ways we can go about correcting that. One way is to come into your bones here and starting with the top leg bone, I'm just going to tilt it just slightly over like that. And then the bottom bone can go down more towards the target like so. So maybe like this, there we go. And then we're gonna do the same for this other side, just rotate it slightly and then just bring it back down like that. So now we come back here and we move this. You can see now that the legs are bending more with how he should be bending. With the way we have copper set up, we have two bones for the legs and he's bending down like this. Now, as mentioned before, when we do a smooth joint pair, we have to use two bones to do that. It would be nice for the feet to be included with this whole thing. And that way we could even set up an independent angle for the feet to make it look like they're on the ground. And we can do this here by simply coming over here to frame zero. And I'm going to come down. We'll click on the bottom leg bone, click on the add bone tool, and then just come in and click and drag and we'll draw out a foot like so. And in fact, looking at this, I might just transform this bone up a little bit, bring this one in and then down like that. And then we can come in and then use the target bone and reposition it. And I'll do the same for this other bone right here. So we'll come in and we're going to add in a bone going down like so, and then just reattach just like that. Now we need to readjust how this is going to be rigged since we can only have two bones for a pair since we originally rigged this up as a smooth joint pair. I'm just going to come in now and use the select bone tool and we'll select the back legs bones. So just like this, we're not going to include the target here and then come over here to your layers and let's make sure that we are on that back leg. So I'm coming down here, we can click on leg left and we're simply going to come up here and click on link bones. We'll do the same for the right leg, making sure we're on the right leg layer. Just come in and select the three bones and then choose to link your bones. And if we come in here, we can just make sure that everything is still situated the way it needs to be. If I click on this bone and choose my bone constraints, we can make sure that target left is still selected. So now we can go to, let's say frame 12 and going back here to our bone layer, we're just going to play around with this a little bit and you can see it looks very similar to how it did before. There's a little bit more of a bend occurring because of how the bones are being linked. But one thing we can do now is coming over here to the bone tools on frame zero, we're going to click on the back foot, hold and shift, and then click on the front foot bone. So both bones are selected come over here to bone constraints, and then we're going to enable independent angle and then hit close. So now if we come in here, you can see that the character is able to bend down with their legs and it maintains this nice grounded look while also having a little bit of a cartoony squishiness to it. So it's a nice way to rig things up. And in this case, it works better than flexi binding since we have the foot to account for but you could do it both ways if you wanted to. And there you go. That is a little bit about target bones and how we can set up our rig for it. And just a couple different ways to set things up regarding your link bones method, as well as being able to do smooth joint on different angles.